Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. We are doing some beekeeping today. In this tree right here next to me, we have a swarm trap set. And about a week and a half ago, we caught a swarm of bees, probably from one of our own hives, just back that way, about 100 feet or so. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna grab this swarm trap off the tree. We're gonna take it back there. We're going to open it up and we're gonna transfer this colony of bees into a new box for them to live in. And I'm kind of ex gonna explain along the way a little bit about swarms and, and bees and try to keep things really, really simple for you guys today and kind of explain to you kind of how this whole process of swarming and, and clusters of bees and things like that work. So I think I have everything ready. I have a new box set up for them back here with five frames in it from previous colonies that we had. Because inside of the swarm trap, there are five frames. Five plus five is gonna make 10 total. I came out last night after dark and tried to close off the entrance to the swarm trap so that all the bees would be in there. But apparently I put it on the wrong setting. I put it on um, one of the options that let the bees still come out. <laughs> so we're probably gonna lose a few bees along the way here, but that's okay. I have, this was a lot heavier than I expected it to be. Oh man, it smells amazing. Wow. Yeah, these bees have been in here for a week and a half, maybe two weeks now, I think. Maybe a little bit long, but that's okay. We'll, we'll make things work today. So what exactly is swarming and why does it matter? I guess if you think about a normal colony of bees, a healthy colony could be anywhere from 20,000 to 80,000 bees. And within that, there's going to be a few hundreds that are males, the drone bees. There'll be one queen and all of the rest are female worker bees. And each bee generally only will live for a couple months. So the queen is always constantly laying new and new, new, new eggs just to keep that population stable, to sustain the colony per se. But how do we get more colonies? You know, how does one colony of bees become two? And that happens through a process called swarming or, or splitting where in the spring, early summer, usually when, when populations are very, very high within the colony, resources are abundant, there's tons of pollen, there's tons of nectar out and about, the bees will make a decision and say, hey, it's time. It's time for us to split and turn this one colony into two. And a bunch of things start happening when they do that. The first is they will create what's called queen cups. They're, they're special cells with inside the colony that are used to raise queens. And the queen will lay, in, lay eggs into those and the bees will start to raise a new queen. And at the same time, a normal queen generally can't really fly well. They're, they're generally too big, they're too heavy. They, um, they, they just can't really fly well. So in fact, if you look right here, the queen right there. you see the one with a really long abdomen? That is the queen from the swarm. So in order to get the existing queen to fly, they kind of stop feeding her so much. They kind of put her on a diet and uh, she loses weight. She gets to the point where she can fly and everything's kind of timed around, you know, raising a new queen, the queen losing weight, flying. And then one day they just decide, okay, it's time. And the queen will crawl out of the existing colony. She'll usually fly up into a tree or something nearby, whether it be a mailbox or somebody's car or the side of a building and land. And thousands and thousands of the bees that were part of her colony will come with her. Some people even say half of the bees will come with her. And they will just basically sit there on that wherever they landed until they find a new home. So they'll start sending out scout bees 
to okay, go check that tree over there, go check this, go check that, see if they can find a new home. Once they decide that they've found something that looks like a good home, they'll all kind of vote on it and say, okay, yep, we agree, that's where we're gonna go. So the queen and all of these bees will fly into that new home, hopefully. In our case, they flew into one of my swarm traps. So that was good for us. We were able to recapture a swarm. Back in the original colony, the worker bees still work on raising those new queens. There's multiple queen cells. And the first one to hatch, she is the chosen one. She will be the new queen. So she will go find any other queen cells that haven't hatched yet, rip them open, and kill them. <laughs> Sounds kind of brutal, but it's it's the way it works. There can only there can be only one. So whichever one hatches first, she she is the one. So so that's kind of how the process whole works. The uh, you know if you think about like a, a single queen lays eggs to sustain the colony, but then the colony at some point they have to reproduce as well. So. So there are some things that you can do as a beekeeper to try to prevent a colony from swarming. I, I try to take a little bit of a different approach with it. And I mean, they're, they're doing it for a reason. It, it is their natural way. It is their natural behavior. And I just try to catch them. <laughs> and uh, I've had pretty good luck in recent years. And hopefully I keep having good luck. So. I hope that was informative to you guys. I will see you guys on the next video.